The Volcano Disaster Assistance Program, or VDAP, is a team of USGS scientists funded by USAID and the USGS Volcano Hazards Program to help volcano observatories around the world. In this talk, from March 18, 2021, VDAP staff provide an overview of their work to their USGS colleagues in the Volcano Science Center. Seventeen speakers will describe VDAP's history, staff, and operations. The map that you see on the screen shows places where uh, VDEP has responded in the field to unrest over the past 35 years. But as you'll learn, we do a lot more volcano response uh, these days. John Ewart will start by introducing us to uh, VDAP's history. Hi, everybody. This is John Ewart. I'm one of the founding members of VDAP with Andy Lockhart and Jeff Marceau. Um, the origin of VDAP was catalyzed by the Nevada del Ruiz catastrophe of 1985. In the five years before that eruption, the stage had been set for VDAP by scientific and technical advances being uh, undertaken at Mount St. Helens, by experiences gained by the USGS in Indonesia beginning in 1982, and through several other USGS and UN proposals to create similar proactive response capabilities for volcano crises. In the wake of the Ruiz catastrophe, a proposal for a cooperative USGS, USAID VDAP program was submitted to AID. This proposal essentially made a business case wherein a dedicated team and cache of instrumentation would be prepared to respond to unrest crises before they became disasters. And this, uh, we believed, we still do, would be more cost effective than, uh, than reactive disaster response. Our initial focus was in Latin America. Now, the Pinatubo story from 30 years ago now is pretty well known through publication of Fire and Mud, a NOVA program, several memoirs, and many other scholarly works. But the upshot for the VDAP program was five years after its founding on a shoestring budget, the VDAP concept was validated. A dedicated team of USGS volcanologists and local counterparts, in this case, FEVOLCs, worked on a large reawakening volcano with a transportable volcano observatory and were able to evacuate tens of thousands of people and hundreds of, hundreds of millions of dollars of property out of harm's way before the VEI-6 eruption on June 15, 1991. In its early years, VDAP was primarily focused on response to unrest and eruptions, but over time, VDAP's mission has evolved to include more capacity building activities at volcano observatories through trainings, workshops, infrastructure building, and scientific collaboration, which will be described now by our other VDAP team members. Thank you. So rewinding a little bit, as John mentioned, in 1986, the USAID Office of Foreign Disaster Assistance and USGS joined forces to create VDAP. And to simplify it, this made sense because USGS obviously has the expertise to um, help with volcano risk reduction around the world. And the Office of Foreign Disaster Assistance has the mandate to respond to disasters internationally. And for about 35 years, this relationship has continued. One of the more recent developments is in June, AFTA, which leads the U.S. government's response to disasters and provides humanitarian assistance for everything except for food, merged with uh, USAID's Office for Food for Peace, which provides food after disasters, to create the Bureau for Humanitarian Assistance, to have one hol holistic bureau to, that deals with disaster response. So what was AFTA is now called the Bureau for Humanitarian Assistance, or BHA. So BHA um, funds about half of the staff salary and all of the OE for um, VDAP staff. And the costs are shared with USGS, which covers about half of the staff salary. And BHA is quite involved in uh, the work that we do in oversight. And sorry, I can't see around that. OK, um, so VDAP renews our agreement with USAID every five years. And every year we provide a yearly work plan that provides details about the work that we plan to do and the budget. And while VDAP's budget from BHA, which is about four to five million dollars per year, as a small fraction of BHA's overall $7 billion budget, um, we do have to compete for those funds since BHA um, responds to disasters, any type of disasters. That would include Afghanistan, Syria, even COVID. 
And so some advocating for VDAP is necessary, and that's one of my roles as the USGS liaison, who in normal times sits at USAID headquarters and represents VDAP, in addition to providing guidance about geoscience issues internationally and leading BHA's natural hazards team. Thank you. So back to me, uh, we divide our work into two major bins, response and capacity building. And these days, and especially during COVID, our response activities revolve more and more around remote response, where we send equipment, set, interpret satellite uh, images, and provide consultations to our partners. Probably 75% of what we do is long-term capacity building and training. And there are some core philosophies and guidelines that remain over the years. This list was put together by former VDAP Chief John Pallister, and it reflects how we've developed in recent years. So we know that many, if not most, volcanic eruptions can be forecast, but it takes really good communications for lives to be saved and disasters prevented. There are other groups out there that help foreign volcano observatories, but very few of them have the ability to give away equipment. And that's because most of them are, are research institutions like the USGS that have legal requirements for inventories and property lists and that sort of stuff. But VDAP, because of its relationship with USAID, can give things away. Uh, we operate in the background. Our focus is on supporting our partners. We don't talk to the press uh, or to government officials outside our partner institutions unless it's specifically requested. Our job is to support. We provide situational awareness as well for the U.S. government agencies, and we're available to U.S. aid and the embassies at all times. And finally, the work we do has direct applications for our domestic program, including technique and instrument development. Our work is generally non-controversial. Uh, it's good publicity for the USGS, U.S. aid, and the U.S. Uh, itself. So to fulfill our work plan for USAID, we have a staff of about 23 full to part-time staff, and we also pay uh, for pay periods for lots of other people. We have four of us to manage the work and budget and uh, fulfill fairly rigorous metrics and evaluations imposed by USAID that you'll hear about later. Uh, we have sections for geology remote sensing and photogrammetry, geophysics and engineering, as well as a full-time computer scientist, and we share our geochemists with VSC. The section leaders are highlighted in red. Most of our staff is at CVO, but we do have staff also at Calvio, Avio, and in Reston and DC. So um, we've heard from Jake and others that we have the annual work plans. We have five-year work plans, but how do we decide what work to include in them? Uh, to know how to help a country, we have to know what's important for them, what's important to do. And one major way we do this is by cooperatively creating threat assessments and gap analyses, TAGAs, for, for each country and incorporating the results in our planning process. The method we use is the same one that was developed in the US for the end views proposals. You can see the initial reference uh, on, on this slide if you're interested in looking at that. Uh, once the TAGA is finished, we then assist in developing long-term implementation plans that emphasize the high threat volcanoes to help guide project planning. Um, TAGAs are required for our aid, uh, but are also useful to help our partners focus their scarce resources on the highest priority targets, as well as to guide projects from other international donor agencies and, and for internal funding proposals within their own governments. All right, so, howdy folks, my name is Andy Lockhart. I'm the head of the engineering section, which includes Aaron Reinhardt and Rowdy Lefevers. Now, the, the tag analysis that Jeff mentioned also helps us determine what equipment and technical assistance to provide when there's a crisis somewhere. So I'm gonna mention our equipment cache and the donations. Now, the cache consists of telemetry, seismic, infrasound, GPS, and gas instrumentation. You're gonna hear about the gas instrumentation later but other things like webcams and rain gauges. It's mostly standard VSC equipment and techniques, which we adapt to local conditions. Now, in an on-site response, we'll bring the equipment and assist with its installation and its use. Otherwise, we'll ship it along with manuals and then keep in touch to make sure it's installed all right. We keep enough equipment on hand for two simultaneous responses. We donate a lot of it. 
We do a remote crisis response once or twice a year. We do an on-site crisis response with technical assistance every year or two, and we ship equipment out about every month. Now in 2020, we donated between 175 dollars and $200,000 worth of gear in 12 shipments to six countries, which included three remote crisis responses, one to Sangai, Ecuador, and other to Pura Peruni, Peru, and into St. Vincent in the, in the uh, Caribbean. So now Rowdy will talk some about our engineering projects and capacity building. Our partner countries' engineering needs are highly variable, so our work is tailored to meet those monitoring needs, skill sets, and the environment they work in. Some countries need supplies of sensors and infrastructure equipment. Some need us to install and train in the operation of the equipment. Others buy their own sensors and need our assistance with network planning, sensor installation, and environmental protection techniques. Over time, we've moved away from designing and fabricating our own sensors and custom installation hardware. Instead, now we purchase and encourage use of off-the-shelf devices that have been developed for industrial applications and are vendor-supported. VDAP Engineering provides experience from the VSC and World Volcano Monitoring Community in the application and appropriate use of sensors and equipment in volcanic environments. Our experience spans a time range of analog uh, seismic sensors and telemetry to modern digital methods with a wide range of sensor types. We assist our partners in their stage of evolution of monitoring methods and work within their constraints towards sustainable modernization. The scale of work with our partners ranges from supply and installation of a single monitoring stations, such as adding a scanning DOAS to an existing volcano monitoring network, to the supply of a complete volcano monitoring network of sensors, installation infrastructure, radio telemetry, and observatory-based real-time data acquisition and processing systems. Of late, working with AVO, CVO, and the VSC, we have been assisting our partners with infrasound deployments, as well as installing equipment to better detect lahars. We're using the world community of experience with destruction of equipment due to lightning and electrical transients to design systems more resilient to these problems so common in tropical marine environments where we work. Ongoing development of state of health monitoring for remote devices is assisting in these tasks. Thanks. In the seismology group, uh, most of our work falls under one of three themes shown here. The first one being analysis and interpretation of new or ongoing seismic unrest around the world. The second one being tra training and technology transfer. And the third one being scientific collaborations and exchanges with our partners. And I'm just going to mention a little bit about each one of these next. Much of our work involves analysis and, and interpretation of new or ongoing seismic unrest, and this ranges from consultation on specific seismic sequences on one end of the spectrum to collaborative development of conceptual models that try to explain long-term seismicity patterns uh, on the other end of the spectrum. More and more, we're turning to quantitative analyses of global volcano data to help in our interpretations and Recently, we've been focusing on using earthquake catalog statistics to try to answer the common question of whether a uh, new seismicity near a volcano is magmatic or tectonic. And two ways we've been doing this are uh, one by directly searching the global earthquake data for analogous seismic sequences, uh, like we did for this sequence of shallow magnitude six events uh, near Rinjani volcano in 2018 and in other places as well. And um, also by just looking for broad statistical differences between pre and since eruptive swarms uh, versus non eruptive swarms. Next. Uh, under the theme of trainings and technology transfer, we continue to focus on improving the monitoring and analysis capabilities of our partners. And many of these activities depend heavily on our, our colleagues in the VSC. For example, we've been exporting the alarm and infrasound software developed at AVO to many of our partners. And John Lyons and Aaron Weck have been heavily involved in that effort. And another example is the Red Pie software that's developed and maintained by Alicia Hodevec Ellis at Calvio. Uh, so far, we've trained partners at five different observatories on the use of this software for real time monitoring at their volcanoes. Next. And finally, uh, an increasing focus for us has been facilitating scientific collaborations and exchanges. And two recent examples of those are shown here in Indonesia on the left. and in Colombia on the right, with some other recent and uh, upcoming examples listed as well. Thanks. 
Hey, hi everyone. I'm Wendy McCausland, and I started with VDAP as an operational seismologist back in 2008. Currently, I'm in a research position. So the first part of that job is science diplomacy. I assist our foreign partners with writing journal articles that document precursory and syneruptive seismicity for their eruptions, and I help with the development, execution, and publication of their research projects. So for example, I was the lead editor for a JBGR special issue on Cinnabung and Kalut Volcanoes. And for that, seven of the 20 papers were first authored by Indonesians, and they were co-authors on 14 more. Next slide. So my research supports the operational activities of VDAP and leverages my experience while I was a, an operational seismologist. That includes seeing more than 125 episodes of unrest or eruption at more than 50 volcanoes worldwide. So I'm interested in using that seismicity to forecast volcano eruptions through integrative studies of precursory and syneruptive seismicity and by recognizing important precursory patterns across volcanic systems of different sizes, composition, and explosivity. Next slide. I am also interested in linking seismicity to the ongoing geologic, geodetic, and geochemical processes during magma ascent from the lower crust to the surface. And how can we how can we use that to apply that pattern and the seismicity to the volcanoes where we have no instrumental history? So for example, Chaiten in Chile or Cinnabong in Indonesia, or at volcanoes who, whose current precursors are different from previous eruptions. So that would be Mount St. Helens in 2004 or Merapi in 2010. Thank you. The work of the geodesy program is based on four major uh, tasks. One is training our uh, colleagues in the use of processing GPS, so in the use of software to process GPS or to model GPS data, gravity monitoring and modeling of insert data. We also provide support during or before, that is even more important, uh, unrest. We develop software to be used as tools by uh, our uh, partner institutions. And furthermore, we encourage cooperation between our uh, partners. Next, please. I want to stress that this is not just a one-way process. I learn much by mentoring our uh, colleagues. This is, for example, one of the papers we published recently together with my colleagues. And what is more important, I learn much by the professional and cultural exchange with our colleagues and friends of other Volcano Observatory. Thank you. Hi, this is Sally Center. Uh, my main job is writing the Smithsonian USGS Weekly Volcanic Activity Report, but I help support VDAP's remote sensing uh, mission part-time. The team consists of me, Julie Griswold, and Rick Wessels. We are supported by a staff at the National Civil Application Center, also known as the NCAC, which is a SCIF in Reston, and uh, also by three talented image analysts there. Those those analysts have been reviewing the classified data since the pandemic started with guidance from Rick, Julie, and myself. So the remote sensing team looks at image data that are publicly available, um, accessible through research agreements. We look at commercial images and uh, classified data in Reston only uh, to support our international partners. Data is collected regularly for VDAP targeted volcanoes, though with variable frequencies. For volcanoes not currently erupting, we collect fewer images, mainly for baseline measurements. And for erupting volcanoes, we analyze the data as frequently as possible. In total, we utilize satellite data for about 110 volcanoes per year. So we also make use of the International Charter for Space and Major Disasters, um, which is a consortium of international space agencies and companies that share data for a short window of time around a crisis. And Julie Griswold holds up that, heads up that enormous effort, um, most recently for Merapi. 
And when an international partner makes a request, we respond with a description of what we see in the data. Occasionally, an accompanying hand sketch or digital sketch is included to help convey our observations. So on the upper left part of the slide, you can see an example of a recent hand-drawn sketch from Merapi. The other example is a digital sketch from Merapi that we had sent to Indonesia during the precursory phase of Merapi's latest dome-forming eruption. As you can see, the sketches can be quite detailed and are an effective way to show the progression of activity over time. So one latest development in our communication to partners was made possible by a new tool created by Diana Norgard. With a new tool, we easily input our volcanic activity summaries into a database. Her software then takes each summary and sends it as an email update to the correct partner. And because of this development, we now send out summaries monthly. Thank you. So, um... VDAP's geology component participates in a variety of different activities. Um, these can be anything from actual hazards mapping to delineating eruption histories, um, studying individual deposits of some specific interest, um, a lot of different aspects of field, field geology. Um, we always carry out these projects in full collaboration with our foreign partners, and it's an area where um, some of the folks in the domestic program have really helped us out in the past, and uh, hopefully we'll continue to do so in the future. Um, an excellent example of this would be like Judy Fierstein's work down at Laguna del Maule that resulted in um, the first ever trinational hazards map for Argentina and Chile. This was a really big deal for anybody who knows the politics down there. Um, we also do uh, straight up thematic training workshops um, where we just bring people in from a variety of different countries, stuff them in a stuff them in a room or take them out in the field and and um, and uh, go at it. In this case, it would have been, uh, for instance, here a training session that Julie Griswold and I did in Lenin Volcano in Argentina on Lahar Hazards. Um, more recently, we've been starting to get into petrologic monitoring. Uh, mostly it's Heather Wright that's, that's leading this up. Um, but that's just generally trying to leverage the information available in, in volcanic ash uh, to better understand the magma dynamics and the eruption dynamics uh, in as near real time as we can to sort of understand the outcome of, of that particular uh, sequence of eruptions. Anyway, on to the next. So building upon the discipline specific studies that you've just heard about, including geology that's near and dear to my heart. All of these disciplines and those in the slides to come are frequently integrated during remote response. So I'll use this as a segue into discussion of our work on multidisciplinary forecasts. People often ask me how do remote responses work for VDAP. Although all responses require an official request for assistance, the initiation mechanism varies and the amount and types of data exchanged vary. We always approach response as a collaboration and often learn a lot from our counterparts, making quote unquote assistance, especially with regards to forecasts, a very two way process. So the types of exchange can include data and analysis ex exchange in both directions. We might provide a framework for forecasts that are completed by our partners. It may include a discussion of preliminary results or interpretation, a list of remaining questions or additional instrumentation that seem like they would provide valuable information, or perhaps a list of trigger points that would cause concern among our own group. Next slide, please. So many of you know that we use event trees to frame our forecasts, where event trees are a logical, present a logical framework for scenarios to come from a volcanic unrest period. The input data that inform probabilities that are subjectively assessed within a group include geologic record, eruptive history, machine learning algorithms, including those you've heard a little bit about today in seismology, expert elicitation of a group that might include the VDAP group, but often increasingly extend to people outside of our group, people in the VSC, scientists around the world, or, or our partner countries. 
We incorporate a lot of different model simulations and results. Next slide, please. And here are some uh, model results from projects. Um, you can see uh, both ASH 3D and Energy Cone and Titan 2D results from Agung, Volcano, Laharzi, um, model results incorporated into hazard maps at Fuego Volcano that are now posted in online dynamic 3D maps there. The results of Dome has ensemble models that were used to forecast the duration of the Cinnabung eruption and a clip from anonymous solicitation forms that incorporate information and opinion from experts around the world and are then um, relayed to the team in terms of the forecast and uncertainty on forecasts. All these contribute to current projects that include things like ge uh, generating generic event trees for different types of volcanoes, like dome forming volcanoes, evaluating forecast success, and borrowing um, methods from weather science and from uh, political science, including Breyer scores, and assessing potential sources of bias and forecasting with lessons learned from behavioral science. Thanks. As Heather explained, VDAP uses this multiple data sets method for eruption forecasting, one part of which includes analyzing global volcano data. For example, we commonly use VEI distributions for different analog sets of volcano to help inform our probability estimations for eruption size. Um, this global data comes from a variety of sources, including VDAP's collective memory, from the literature, from topical databases like Dome has and Flowdat, and often from the Smithsonian Global Volcanism Program database. Next slide. However, most existing databases don't have the level of detail needed to answer common VDAP forecasting questions, such as what percentage of unrest leads to eruption or how long after eruption onsets do uh, the paroxysmal explosions occur, as well as many more. Um, to answer these questions, we've built a database and are populating it with very detailed eruption chronologies. These eruption chronologies are back populated from the literature and from other sources like GBP bulletins, and they're entered in near real time during various crises. The database includes all sorts of events such as explosions, PDCs, dome growth, and the properties of those events such as column height, volume, run out distance. Currently, there's about 10,000 events that have been populated into the database, and most of these focus on dome forming eruptions as, as kind of our starting point. Next slide. Uh, we use the eruption chronology data database, database, database alongside other existing, existing databases. databases. Uh, for a lot in a lot of different ways, um, none of which I can get into detail about, but we we use it to visualize timelines of event data during crises to analyze global statistical trends, to compare activity to activity at analogous volcanoes, to fill in gaps where local knowledge might be really sparse, to inform our conceptual models, and to derive model input parameters. Thanks. Uh, oh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Christoph Kern, and together with Peter Kelly, the two of us make up the VDAP geochemistry team. Um, each of us are actually half-time VDAP employees, and we work half-time with the domestic program. Um, so over the last decade or de decade and a half or so, the, the field of gas geochemistry has really gained a lot of importance at volcano observatories around the world. And that's been spurred on by the increasing realization that uh, gases carry significant diagnostic information useful for understanding volcanic processes and also by technological advances that now allow gas emissions to be monitored continuously and in real time. Um, Peter and I both work on uh, developing and deploying such instruments. Uh, one example is the multi-gas instrument, um, several of which are shown in the lower left of the slide. Um, this instrument can be used or installed near volcanic vents, and it measures the main chemical speciation of the emitted gas over time. Um, as you can see here, Peter organizes uh, regular workshops focused on multi-gas assembly, maintenance, and data analysis for our international partners. And also, as you may have noticed in that picture, they're also for our VSC colleagues. Um, now there are about 15 of these instruments on volcanoes around the world, and miniature versions can even be flown on UAS. Um, and you can see that in the bottom center. 
where such an instrument was flown uh, in the plume of Agung Volcano during the 2017 unrest. Um, I, for my part, I focus more on uh, ground-based and aerial remote sensing of volcanic gases, and in particular, uh, developing, deploying, and training on DOAS instruments. Um, DOAS instruments measure the absorption of sunlight passing through volcanic plumes, and allows that allows the determination of gas emission rates. Uh, mostly, we're looking at SO2. Uh, one example is shown in the top center, where we're installing a DOAS at Sinabung Volcano in Indonesia. Um, BDAP also supports the NOVAC network, which is an international community of volcano observatories that run uh, DOAS instruments on about 50 volcanoes or so around the world. And we organize and fund workshops that get that community together every few years. Finally, both Peter and I try to uh, help our counterparts on research projects and uh, provide assistance in, uh, to them for getting their interesting results published. Thanks. I assist our partners with their high resolution topographic needs through various photogrammetry techniques and imaging platforms from drone to traditional aircraft to optical satellite data, depending on what's available and what's the best tool for the job. High resolution DEMs are critical for hazardous flow modeling, morphometry studies, change detection, volume estimates. They can improve INSAR and infrasound analyses, be used for instrumentation siting and as bases for geologic and hazard mapping. Successive time series of DEMs um, of erupting volcanoes provide some of the most fundamental metrics of an eruption, the rate of effusion and the volume of erupted lava. Although high resolution DEMs serve many purposes, these data sets are often lacking for many volcanoes around the world. During eruptions, I support our partners with both remote and on-site assistance. Remote assistance is usually done via tasking and processing of high resolution optical satellite data like you see on the bottom left. Next. I also run workshops and trainings at the request of our partners to put these techniques and capabilities into their hands with the ultimate goal of having photogrammetry be another routine monitoring tool in their toolbox. These trainings usually involve a field component, typically with a drone platform, where we design a field survey, learn processing pipelines, and most importantly, analysis and interpretation. Sometimes these involve 20 to 30 people from various disciplines, and sometimes they take a one-on-one -on -one scenario. I also support our partner observatories in scientific and research applications utilizing various photogrammetry techniques. In the end, it's all about what our partners need to better do their jobs. And finally, through all of these activities, we are continuously building partnerships and relationships across the globe. Thanks. So we've been hearing um, a lot that uh, VDEP does a lot of their training, our, a lot of our training and capacity building through missions, through crisis responses, through international meetings and workshops. But the centerpiece of our training program is really a remarkable partnership that we have, have had with uh, the Center for the Study of Active Volcanism at the University of Hawaii. We've been partners with them at least since 1995. And jointly, uh, we run an annual seven plus week international training class for, for mid-career scientists and technicians in Hawaii and in the Pacific Northwest. The course uh, is taught by people from UHH, from the VSC at large and VDAP staff, and it, it covers a range of topics, including volcano monitoring, field methods, forecasting, event trees, volcano hazard maps, observatory operations, crisis communications, and, and hazard modeling. Next, please. Uh, the map here is, shows the worldwide impact of this course. Uh, it shows the distribution of attendees from the very first 1990 class until 2019. Uh, 2020 and 2021, both classes were canceled owing to the pandemic. Uh, since 1990, there have been 264 participants in the class from 31 countries, the top three being the Philippines with 34, Indonesia with 31, Peru with 27. Uh, the list of, of participants includes a veritable who's who of the volcano observatories of the world. Uh, scientists in charge, technicians, engineers have all passed through the program. And, uh, you know, major thanks to all of you in the audience to have helped to make this, this incredible program such a success. And a huge shout out and thank you to, to Darcy Bevins and Don Thomas of the University of Hawaii 
without whom with this program would be not possible to be run. VDAP does not have the resources to do this. This partnership has been incredibly fruitful and influential worldwide. Thanks. The International Volcano Activity Notification System, known as IVANS, was developed with the primary purpose of rapidly disseminating information and analysis about volcanic unrest and eruptions with a focus on volcanoes throughout Latin America and the Caribbean and East Asia Pacific. This information is disseminated via situation reports or SITREPs to U.S. government entities, such as, but not limited to, U.S. embassies, BHA field offices, the U.S. military, and the White House Security Council. IVAN SITREPs are event-driven, for example, if an alert level is raised or evacuations occur. They provide situational awareness to U.S. government officials and most importantly, include value-added information of VDAP analysis, forecast, and our response to an evolving situation. This year marks the 10th anniversary of IVANS, and I'm happy to report that the system in IVANS is now a reality thanks to Diana Norgard. We have a web app that allows many users in VDAP to craft, review, and distribute SITREPs. We also have pre-calculated volcano population indices for volcanoes of the world, along with estimates of downstream populations at risk based on digitized hazard maps. SITREPs include simplified hazard maps that provide visual context of potential hazards, location of critical infrastructure like airports, as well as major population centers. Thank you. My name is Diana Norgard, and I came on as VDAP's computer scientist in 2017. My initial work consisted primarily of development support for SORM and NOVAC software. SORM is a visualization software for seismic data. Novak software is used for acquisition and analysis of gas emissions data. Both software have been around a very long time and are still used globally today. Other software developed by USGS and used Wiley and VSC are Earthworm, Winston, and Valve. For these, VDAP offers installation, training, and support to partners. In 2018, we installed Valve in Indonesia and Costa Rica. In 2020, we provided online training of Earthworm and Winston to observatories in Argentina, Peru, and Guatemala. In addition to support for software used by our partners, I also developed software for internal VDAP use. This includes a monitoring and evaluation database for reporting to USAID, an application to create and disseminate IVANS, another to disseminate remote sensing observations, and a dashboard for getting data on volcanoes worldwide. Finally, we try to encourage knowledge sharing and collaboration between observatories, particularly in Central and South America where they have a common language. In 2019, VDAP hosted in Guatemala its first summit for IT professionals working at Latin American volcano observatories. During COVID, we continued to bring IT folks together in the region by organizing talks from the various observatories. Next. Hi again. Binational exchanges are opportunities to bring together non-scientist stakeholders in volcanic risk mitigation with volcano observatories to share experiences related to volcanic unrest, eruption, and sometimes disaster. These exchanges are funded totally by USAID and are organized and facilitated by VDAP. Volcano crises are outside most non-scientist knowledge and experience, and VDAP takes U.S. stakeholders to places that have experienced volcanic disasters so that emergency managers, first responders, and other volcanic risk stakes stakeholders can see firsthand the eruption impacts and learn how their counterparts have managed. In turn, our counterpart volcano observatories travel to the U.S. with their non-scientist stakeholders to learn, observe, and participate in our hazards and risk mitigation activities. Next, please. Binational exchanges have occurred with various themes and numbers of participants. Some of these include an ongoing Nevada Del Ruiz Mount Rainier exchange focused on lahar risk. We had a large incident command system exchange that covered ICS at all levels of practice during a week long functional exercise for a Cascadia subduction zone earthquake. Uh, another example is an exchange we had between Chile and Calvo focused on explosive volcanism and mass evacuation related to Chai Tan and Long Valley. The mass evacuation hasn't happened yet at Long Valley. Binational exchanges have contributed to markedly better stakeholder engagement in the Cascades in California, as well as in our counterpart countries. USAID has been a strong supporter of the binational exchanges because they engage a full cross-section of disciplines with roles in emergency planning, preparation, and response. 
Financial exchanges will continue once pandemic protocols are lifted, and we hope that's soon. Thank you. So some of the exchanges and projects that VDAP works on focus on socialization or helping people who live near volcanoes understand their hazards and reduce their risk. Uh, one example would be the last exchange before the pandemic, where educators from the state of Washington and outreach experts from CBO attended an exchange on volcano education for school children in Colombia. VDAP also collaborates and exchanges ideas with our counterparts' own outreach and socialization programs in countries like Ecuador and Indonesia. A newer partnership for VDAP is a risk assessment of the built environment and population near volcanoes with GEM, or the Global Earthquake Model Foundation in Italy. GEM has built a global seismic risk database, and now these data are being used in areas near and downstream from volcanoes. Next slide, please. So with all that we are doing VDAP, how do we track progress on VDAP projects for evaluation, plus quarterly and annual reports that we need to submit to USAID? VDAP uses a monitoring and evaluation system from USAID where we report on 17 different indicators. And this is everything from the number of people living near volcanoes where VDAP provided assistance, to the number of volcano monitoring instruments donated during a quarter, to the number of people trained in VDAP-led workshops, to the number of presentations and publications that were produced. All of this data goes into two different databases for monitoring and evaluation, and it's accessible through some websites. And internally, then, we can use these to answer questions like, when was the last time that VDAP responded to events at a certain volcano? Or what instrumentation was recently donated to counterparts in a certain volcano? Also this year, we have an, ex an external evaluation of VDAP, which is now underway. It's designed and conducted by a team of sociologists from Florida International University. And this is a chance for our counterparts to give responses and feedback to us about what programs they like that VDAP is doing and what we could do better. And we hope to have that wrapped up at the end of May and start using these data to improve our programs moving forward. And back to you, Jake. Uh, thank you all for your attention. Uh, that, that wraps up what we wanted to uh, provide for you, kind of an overview of the program. Uh, there are a lot of new employees in the VSC over the past few years. and. And really, uh, a lot of the employees out there aren't that familiar with the VDAP program. So we wanted to use this new uh, Teams method for getting all of us together to talk to, uh, to you all about what we do in VDAP uh, and talk about how VDAP uh, supports uh, both USAID and the Volcano Hazards program. Uh, we also want to, to hear from you. Uh, we feel that we're better uh, when we can take the things that are being advanced in the VSC and bring them to the world. And we think we're better when we get the fresh ideas of, of you all working with us on various trips and, uh, and, and, and working with us on different projects. So uh, please reach out to anyone you know in VDAP or, or send a note. And uh, hopefully, if, with your supervisor's permission, we can, we can work together someday. So uh, with that said, uh, we're about 45 minutes in, and we can answer questions if you're interested. Thanks very much.